God wants a holy people, not a moral people. You say, well, is there a difference between the two? Absolutely. To capture it most succinctly, it is the difference between the Pharisees, the most zealous of all the religious leaders in ancient Israel, and the Lord Jesus Christ himself. There is the dichotomy. You see, they were moral. He was holy. Morality is the negative concept. It defines itself in terms of what one refrains from doing. More often than not, its preoccupation is with externals. Holiness, on the other hand, is a much more positive concept. Like its related term, it is much more holistic. It embraces the externals, to be sure, but it doesn't stop there. It is far more penetrating, thoroughgoing, and comprehensive. Let me illustrate the difference. The moral person abstains from wrong actions. The holy person hates the very thought of doing wrong. The moral person is driven by what people perceive him to be. The holy person is committed to what God wants him to be. The moral person mindlessly adheres to a cold list of do's and don'ts. The holy person ponders what brings the greatest pleasure to his heavenly father. The moral person keeps a meticulous record of all of his good deeds, expecting by them to win the favor of God. The holy person grieves that nothing he ever does, even for God, is completely free of any sinful or selfish motive. He knows then that every blessing he ever receives from God is pure grace. The moral person lives by his own definition of what is right and wrong, and he loves to impose that definition upon other people. The holy person allows the word of God to direct his life, and in anything beyond that, he guards the silences of the Bible, honoring the differences that freedom allows among those who dearly love the same Savior. Holiness affects the heart, it affects the mind, it affects the emotions, it affects the will, it affects the motives, it affects the conscience. Holiness affects the totality of a person. What he does, where he goes, how he feels, what he thinks. Unfortunately, my dear friends, we are living at a time, however, when the great majority of evangelical Christianity is morality-driven rather than holiness-driven. If we can just get prayer back in public schools... If we can just get the Ten Commandments once again posted upon our walls, of, on the walls of our legal institutions, if we can just manage to shut down all of the Planned Parenthood clinics, if we can just elect more Christians to Congress, it's morality-driven, not holiness-driven, revealing our failure to understand the radical difference between moral improvement and life from death. And worse than all of that, the real tragedy of the moralist, my friends, is his failure to appreciate that the gospel of transformation is far more powerful than the religion of prohibition. That God has never, ever advanced his cause by the means of a moral majority, but always through the means of a holy minority. 